origins of Porno Creep 13 are, um, I want to say around, Christ, 2008, was it 2008, 2009? It was right, it was shortly after the Ritual Fix CD release party, so I was, uh, working on some instrumental stuff that I'd had for years that I just did mostly just to amuse myself and never intended to release it or blah blah blah. Mostly because people just clearly do not give a shit about instrumental music yeah. and, as a whole. And I really, I mean, I like doing it, but it's just, you know, it was one of those things where at the time it wasn't something like, it would have been, you know, because I was already in bands that were doing stuff and and it was, it was just not something that I was real, you know, you know, I didn't really get into the genre as much as I had in my youth. And uh, I was talking to uh, Will Marvellis, the head of Zero Budget Records, the label that I am currently on, and he was just going off about how the bands that were on the label either were not churning out any new material or had broken up or had just, you know, completely imploded or got fire or whatever. And I was saying, well, I've got a bunch of stuff that I've got laying around. I don't know if you want to do anything with it, but it'd be something you could release, blah, 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 blah. He said, well, let me hear it, blah, blah, blah. Um, we ended up going with releasing the CD. Um, I think that was 2009 by the time it actually came out. I'm awful with dates. But uh, ended up, yeah, completely coming out only because nothing else was coming out. So that's why that came out, and then I, not too long after my CD came out on Zero, um, my roommate at the time was the head A&R of Tranthem out of California, and a bunch of their big releases uh, just didn't turn in their stuff to release, and they were freaking out about having a release, and he had been a big advocate of mine trying to get me signed there anyway, and so right around, I want to say, the decision was made like 11th hour, okay, fine, get your buddy on here and get, get these songs out and, you know, we'll make this happen. And that completely had the other people turned in their releases like they were supposed to, um, I wouldn't have gotten that deal as well, which at the time was pretty cool because Lenny Kravitz had put out stuff for True Anthem, uh, Trent Reznor released, was it a full album on True Anthem or just selected tracks or some silliness? Um, Do you remember? I don't remember. I'm not sure. Are you talking about like I the slip the or Ghost One through Four? No clue. I, I, all I remember is I remember that he had stuff that he released uh, free on the internet because yeah. and that was true. I think that was yeah. So then I think that would have been the slip. Yeah. So I think I'm pretty sure the slip was free. Yeah, that that'd be the one, and and, and that was a, a cool deal. Um, you know, at the time. You know, it got me music out pretty good. I mean, and, and then they pretty much figured out that, you know, since at the time, I the Porno Creep numbers were not huge, and neither was the fixed number, so they basically sold it, so he basically sold it to them as, you know, if you take these two bands together, the numbers aren't too bad, and blah, 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 blah. So the fix, uh, Ritual Fix and the Porno Creep songs were on there together, just under kind of my umbrella of, so I wrote everything. I'm a genius, um, and uh, um, they figured out they were going to get more their money's worth by making me work as my own A and R, which was weird. But uh, right. but yeah, I'm, er, er, I, I, I get confused at the this level here because then it got kind of murky, because then I actually was A and Ring for them, and I signed this uh, band, Cadius, I think was the band. Kind of a good, kind of simple, planny sort of. Um, what's that genre? What do you even call that? What do you oh kids God. call that now? Pop punk. Pop punk sort of. Yeah. It's kind of like digestible by tweens. Right, right, right. Um, and it was cool because I learned a lot about the A and R business and how little record companies give two shits about talent. And uh, but it was cool. I I got to do that for a few months while plugging the Porno Creep stuff. And then, I don't remember, I want to say that they let go of a lot of the A&Rs because they lost their ass in some dumb shit deal when they signed Tila Tequila to some thing, and I'm, I could be wrong. I think that's your answer right there. I, like, yeah. You lost your ass because you signed Tila Tequila. Yeah, and, and, and it's too bad because there was a lot of really talented stuff that uh, I'd find, and 
And pretty much my answer every time when we tried to bring something that actually was of merit of some kind was, well, what are the numbers? Can we sell it to the to the tweens at Hot Topic? Do they look good in skinny jeans? Then I don't give two shits was usually what they said. But the well, and and, and honestly, you have to you have to understand it's like everything with music is visual. But the problem is with you know these shows is you you have you're on a show with twelve bands who all fucking look alike who probably have better connections than you. If you don't have something that sets you apart, where you can go, oh, okay, you know, like with the band I was in Ritual Fix, um, there were probably bands that were better than us, um, probably way better than us, with many a aspects of the business, but with our visual, you know, we put on a good show and we had a chick in the band who played bass, which separated us from the 80 different bands we were on the show with, where they just had four sweaty guys wearing black shirts and black jeans, and who were, you know, probably a better band, but visually, you can make that and go, oh, okay. You know, like with, you know, anything that's successful is you can, like, mentally, you know, see in your head. When you when you think of the name, you see, oh, okay, well, that's what it is. Um, but uh, unless you, um, who the fuck was that band? Played a show with a band called Whittle Monsters when we, when we opened up for Static X with Fix. And they literally were a band that wore giant stuffed animal costumes, but, like, evil stuffed animal costumes. And I don't remember a note that they played, but I still remember that they were giant stuffed animal costumes. Not saying you should be giant stuffed animals. But if you can, it's probably a good way to go.